Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and it's time for the next segment in the 2016 EDC Essentials series. I'm actually going to jump to the end this time. I wanted to go in sequence uh, and stick first and foremost with everything that is on your body. But a couple things in the next section I'm getting upgrades for in the next day or so. So I wanted to make sure it's current, so I'm going to wait till I get those. So we're going to go to the end, and we're going to talk about... Uh, an optional thing which is your EDC bag and there's a lot of ideas out there when it comes to EDC bags and I know what you're thinking you're thinking I'm gonna show you bag and we're gonna sit here for 20 minutes while I pull out fire starters and water filters and all sorts of craziness basically a mini bug out bag that's not what this is about I'm gonna, you're probably gonna be a little surprised at some of what's in it see a lot of people think and, and this is a stage that we all go through. I went through this stage myself. You're like, I'm going to make an EDC bag. And then you end up with this. So this is like my Rapdom T311 bag. This is my 72-hour kit. All right? This thing weighs 20 pounds. You do not want to carry that around with you everywhere you go. Not only because it's heavy, uh, because you're going to draw attention to yourself. So I'm going to show you what kind of bag that I carry I'm gonna show you what goes in my bag and I'm gonna tell you why I have it and hopefully that will spur some uh, th new thought processes and then we're gonna briefly go over the keychain because that's that's a big EDC thing myself or I think myself all right guys so stick around and let's find out what is in this bag So this right here, this is my EDC bag. The bag is made by Malcolm Coderre, thehiddenwoodsman.com, and it is his haversack. Uh, they run about 80 bucks, 100% handmade, custom. So he's got a huge list of uh, color combinations and things to choose from. Most people, usually you see these with like the bushcrafters and stuff like that, but I like the bag so much I did one of the first big reviews on this bag, which really uh, helped launch him. And then later on, I bought one from him. I wanted to do one in like a urban sort of color. So we got dark blue with a cryptic Typhon webbing. And it just kind of blends in a little better for, you know, carrying bags around in the city. And since someone's going to ask uh, these morale patches, you can get those at magplates.com. It's, I just had them do it because people ask for it. I don't make any money off it or anything like that. So they just throw me a bag of them every once in a while. So this bag right here with what I have in it, I just weighed it, weighs about seven and a half pounds. So it's a far cry from that 20 pound wrapped on bag that I showed earlier. Now let's just go around. We'll start out with what's on the outside. Over here, we've got this pouch and i don't i might have got this at county com like years ago i'm not sure but i found a way to tag it on here using one of the vanquest uh whatever the heck things are called molly sticks and what i keep in here this is my hanging strop kit so it is loaded with herbs yellowstone uh, strop compound and if I'm using a knife out somewhere, I can very quickly bring that back to hair splitting razor sharpness with this strop. I just undo it, tie it around a tree or a doorknob, you know, bing, bang, boom, done. So that's where I keep my strop because I'm always messing with knives. <laughs> On the other side, I have a, this is a high speed gear single pistol mag pouch. And that's where I keep my spare flashlight. I mentioned in the flashlight video that the Through Night TN uh, 12 2016 edition rides on the outside of my EDC bag. Well, here it is. And then I also keep a climbing rated carabiner, which that is going to tie into something later once we get to that section. Open this up. So I opted for the high-vis high vis, uh, yellow interior now 
let's go ahead and deal with the inside first. You've got these, this retention, uh, what do we call this? I don't know, so it's just something that keeps everything from falling out. Now the first thing that I keep on the top of my EDC bag, it's kind of hard doing it like this with the tripod, <laughs> is a Shema. And it's very important that your Shema has uh, Skull and Cross, or Jolly, or what is that, Jolly Roger? Yeah. It's very important that it has that. No, it's not. It's not. But why do I keep this in here? Well, because it's just having a, a Shema is one of the most useful things that you could possibly carry, whether it be to clean yourself up, to wipe your face, or as you will see here as we get into further in the bag, it has one other major use. So I always have one of these. They just always come in handy. Now some of this stuff in here is going to be very specific to me. I'm not saying that you need to have these items, like this next thing that's in here. So what this is, because I am in the YouTube video business, it is a pistol grip table stand tripod, which also has a cell phone adapter attachment to it. And you can do a lot of stuff with this. So let's, let's think this out. Why is this handy? First of all, I use, uh, we're going to talk about phones here in another video, but I use a Samsung Galaxy S5, or no, Galaxy Note 5. So this will fit in here. If I see something, something comes up and I need to take some video on the spot that I can port to my video later, well, this thing is capable of doing 4K video. And what's nice about it is it's got this quick launch functionality on the main button. So even if the screen's locked, I could double tap it and it will go straight into camera mode. And then I can select video camera or whatever. So whether I need to maybe see, see something I need to do for a video, or maybe I see an accident, or maybe, you know, active shooter or some sort of newsworthy thing that needs to be documented, I can, yeah, you can pull out and hold your camera, but it's a lot steadier to use it this way. And I could flip it around and use the other camera as well. And here's another little oddball use. You know, I mentioned active shooter. Just giving you some outside the box options here. I was messing around this the other day. I was just curious of how it worked. I was like, hmm. And basically what I did is like I, I, used, I held this like this. And I twisted it just a little bit. And I held it right around the corner of the wall and I was using it almost like you know using an inspection mirror to see what's happening uh, around the corner. I was like eh, you know it just goes to show that if you have a little bit of imagination you can find all sorts of uses for this sort of stuff. A lot of times I'm just sitting around bored and I flip this around use it as a stand and I'm watching a movie or something on it or YouTube or whatever. So this may not be useful to you, but it is useful to me. That's why I have it. Always have a set of gloves on me. Now there, there's a few other things, but I'm gonna jump right to the important part of this bag. So we're gonna start with the biggest part of the important portion. I can reach in here, grab this tab, pull it out, and here is my bleed kit. Now, if you don't have stuff like this in your carry bag, stop calling yourself a prepper. I know it's a little bit rude, it's a little bit cocky, but I want people to think. I know this because I did two outstanding videos with a highly trained medical guy about tourniquets, about stopping uh, non-compressible arterial bleeding, and they've got hardly any views compared to knife review videos. If you're, if you're a preparedness guy and you're just planning for emergencies, what is the first thing that you should prepare for? What is the most likely thing? What is the thing that could kill you? Bleeding. Do you get in a car every day? You get in a car accident or, you know, let's, let's just not even talk about, you know, what if you get shot, which you should have this stuff too if you, if you uh, carry concealed. But let's just say a car. 
something happens you get in an accident you get a laceration you cut an artery you get attacked by a guy with a knife you're bleeding arterially now what if you say well i'm going to just take off my belt and eh, sorry it doesn't work ask any medical guy improvised tourniquets are only about 15 to 20 percent effective and that's if you're really really good at it is your life something that you want to play games with oh well i'll just use my belt oh i'll use my my paracord i mean i've seen guys on youtube that that want to do things the old style and they're like oh, the only first aid thing that i need is a bandana don't listen to those people if you want to live listen to the medical people I, okay guys speak up i know that there's a bunch of emts and medical people that watch me speak up in the comments back me up on this uh, how important is it to have this stuff so what do i have here first of all i have this is a swat t tourniquet i think this is the best tourniquet there is notice it is out of the package so all i have is a lightly tied rubber band and this thing is ready to deploy now I got to do that back up again. So there is my tourniquet. So this, any kind of arterial bleed in the arms or the legs, this is what you, what you got. Now you got some other type of bleeding, some sort of wound or whatever. This is, oh, what is that? It's not in the package. I don't recognize it. This is an Israeli bandage. This is a combat application bandage. This is what it looks like when you take it out of the package. And you should, you should know what this thing looks like. You should know how to use it. We talk, Hector talks about this in the medical video that we did on this. Well, what about it being sterile? <laughs> you know, like, like Hector said, you know, if you're using this, germs is not your main concern. Your main concern is you're bleeding. You could die. Okay, so if you get a couple germs on this, that is not the thing to worry about. Okay, you get it. If you get an infection, you get to the hospital and you get some antibiotics or something. But the point is you get to the hospital in one piece. You get the hospital alive. So you may not be, you know, they come very tightly compacted, uh, vacuum sealed and stuff like that. So just get it out and then package it with this other stuff in a large you know one gallon bag because you're going to be freaking out if you actually need this stuff now what are these two for in case i get a sprained ankle no go back and watch the second uh, medical i'm gonna put those medical videos in the description box below because if you didn't see them you need to watch them but these two right here are for the arterial bleeds that you cannot control with a tourniquet non-compressible arterial bleeding so basically you're going to take this gauze roll and you're going to whether it's up in your armpit or your neck or up in the groin area those are like the three main places where you could have uh, non-compressible arterial bleeding and then you're going to wrap you know you'll have to watch the video to see exactly what to do but then you're going to compress that super tight by wrapping it up with a uh, ace bandage so that's what those two are for. So right here, whatever kind of major bleeding that I have, I have the tools to save my life right here or to save the life of somebody that I care about or to save the life of a stranger. Now let's, we're not gonna get into the Good Samaritan laws and blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go by my conscience and I'm gonna do the right thing. If, if I find my, if universe puts me in the right place at the right time. And then the last thing is just one little pack of surgical gloves. So if you have time to put them on, especially if you're messing with someone else. So all that stuff goes in this bag and it sits on top of the things on the bottom. And then I have the top of the bag up like this. So if I open this bag, I can just reach in and grab that and pull the whole kit out. And to me, that stuff right there is more important than having water filters and fire kits and stuff like that in your bag. Because again, the point is we're looking at an overall system of personal preparedness based on what you have with you right now at this moment. And if it's not on you, 
then it's at least with you at your location. If it's at work, it's under your desk. If you're at home, it's at home. Uh, if you're in the car, it's in the passenger seat. So you may not have to walk around, you know, if you're outside at the park, well, you don't want to carry it, at least it's in the car. It's not far from you because your car is never that far from you. So enough about that. Now the other thing that I put in here that kind of goes in hand in hand with that is this little bad boy. And you're like, what is that? This is a Skosh Rhythm Plus forearm heart rate monitor. And it is not specifically for that. What, this is what I wear in the gym. It goes around your forearm right about up here and you turn it on and then it syncs to whatever your whatever your fit bitty thing or whatever fitness tracker that's what I'm trying to think of so this one's still new uh, I don't know where it's at I have to play I always have to play with this for a minute because it's brand new but with this, this is a Polar A300. I also have that Garmin Vivo Fit 2, which you sometimes see on my wrist. A lot of times I'm wearing this in the gym. I've got a new watch coming. When I get that watch, it's gonna be on here and the Garmin's going back. But either one of them, I can, once I sync this up, it shows my heart rate right there. So imagine for a second, you're by yourself. You just had to administer self-aid in a bleeding situation once i've got that controlled i'm going to want to calm myself down and i'm going to want to slow you know do some deep breathing and i want to slow my heart rate down so this is going to help me do that or i could if i'm giving aid to someone else i could very well stick this on their arm and see what their heart rate is going on right there so even though this was intended for physical fitness training. And this is very accurate. This is hands down the best heart rate monitor you can buy. The ones on the wrist built in, they don't work very well. So even though this was intended for fitness, I thought of a way to use it uh, in an emergency. Now I used to have my whole mini first, first personal first aid kit in here. I decided I don't need all that stuff. I need, I need the bleed stuff instead. And I just built a smaller condensed first aid kit. for This is for the smaller stuff. And this is just a cream cheese box that I got, I think, at Big Lots. And it's got all sorts of different small bandages and, and super glue and ibuprofen and uh, neosporin and all that stuff. This it's very light, takes up no space. So medical emergencies, I've got those covered. Now, you know me, I'm a knife guy. I gotta have a backup blade. So in my bag, my backup blade is a Mora 2000 in a C2G Fab neck sheath. And the reason I have this one is it is absolutely freaking lutely stupid razor sharp, especially since I uh, power stropped it. And this is my favorite Mora handle. Very useful, it's modified for you know 90 degree spine and this could serve very well defensively as well. So extremely lightweight, full size fixed blade in the bottom of my bag. Sometimes I might have my Jessmic in here, but that's if I have a use for it. Backup power. The cell phone, this is all gonna tie into that section as well, but this is my current favorite uh, everyday carry anchor battery. And this is the 10500 with the quick charge technology. So I plug this into my phone, it kicks in the fast charge uh, function and it charges things really, really quick. Because in an emergency, I'm gonna want this thing to have power. Plus I can charge all my other stuff too. I can charge flashlights and this, that, and the other thing. And how am I gonna do that? Well, because I use all those things a lot, I have power options in this bag. So that is that uh, little through night 18650 charger. So I can plug that into this, charge my flashlights, or I can take my extra 18650 as a backup and use this as the charger to charge the phone because it works both ways. 
And it seems like I got a lot of stuff in here, but this thing was only half full. A little uh, pick-me-ups. If you have an Aldi's near you, these things are awesome. They taste great. They're the cheapest energy shots out there. I, that's what I. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning. And I always keep one of these Goo Energy Gels because sometimes I need that stuff. And the only other thing in the main compartment is just the rest of my power kit, which is just a small camera case. I've got several extra USB cables because I have so many things that are powered by USB that I have on me. And then I have uh, the newest Anchor two port uh, quick charger. So if I'm at someone's house or somewhere, I can plug this in and power up my equipment rather easily. And I keep, like I said, I've got four extra USB cords in here. Got a little pocket back here. Uh, I usually just have a little extra pen, whatever papers I need to carry. I'll have uh, two extra mags for whichever firearm that I'm carrying for the day. The other one is on my belt, which we'll get to that. And then I, I have a figure eight. What the heck? What's that for? Well, we're not at that section yet. So remember when I said a lot of these sections, there's going to be callbacks and tie-ins to other sections. So I do keep this, well, you know, look over here got a climbing rated multi-purpose binder so hmm if only I had something to rig myself up with you also have a little pocket right here that's generally where I keep my portable brain which is a right in the rain notebook and then lastly we have this velcro pouch this is where I keep a lot of my smaller stuff now you could uh, you could one could make the argument that I've already over redundancyed myself on blades, but this has prepared my 101. If you haven't figured out by now that I'm a blade freak, you haven't been paying attention. Backup utility blade, which could also be used medically, uh, Havilon knife. Which somewhere in here is a pack of extra blades for it. Then I have, these are extra utility knife blades and that is because one of the sections we haven't got to yet, but I still EDC this mini Husky folding box cutter from Home Depot. And they might still have a few of these. They still got some of the Christmas stuff out that they haven't sold yet. And they had three packs of these for ten dollars. Super glue because super glue. Compact mirror. You're like, why? Why do you got that for? Is that for putting on your eyeliner? You wear an eyeliner? I swear, I got old videos where people ask me if I'm wearing eyeliner. And I don't know if it's the the coloring of the video or just my eyelashes were extra luxurious that day. I swear to God, people ask me that. But the reason I have this, you would think I got this for signaling, but really it's to look at your face. If you're out somewhere and you don't have a mirror near you and you get something in your eye, how are you gonna fix it? Uh, or you get a cut on your face, how are you gonna inspect the damage? This is for self-care. This is for taking care of your face in, an, in some sort of emergency, whether it's just having an accident, and you get cut or maybe your contacts wear like me and you lost a contact and you just need to put some new contacts in. So that's why that's in there. Eyesight is not overrated. I always keep an extra pair of Skull Candy inked uh, earbuds. These are my favorite. Not only because I think they got the best sound for music and they're only 15 bucks, but this is also my hands free as well. If it's cold out, I'm wearing hoodies. Uh, I run this through the front of my hoodie, cut a little hole in my pocket and keep my phone up in the front pocket. So it's, got, it, it's just good. Sometimes you need to be hands free when you're communicating. And the only other two things in here is an extra 18650 from a flashlight and a small pill fob loaded with ibuprofen. So we got quite a bunch of stuff right here and it all fit in this small little bag 
and it didn't even fill that bag up. It only filled that bag up about halfway. There's still room in it. You don't want your EDC bag to be completely full. Uh, you might have to add something to it at some point. Plus, you just you, it's just more weight. So you should, this thing's about 12 by 11 by seven, I think, the dimensions of this. And about half full, we're talking about seven pounds worth of material. Any more than that, you're overdoing it. So is that what you expected to see in this bag? Uh, give you any new ideas here? So that's it. I think the most important part of this whole system right here if you only take one thing away from this video, take this away from it. SWAT T tourniquet, Israeli bandage, both of these outside of the package. Ace bandage, Curlix, large roll of gauze material. That is for your bleeding. That's what's going to save your life. Now you're prepared. All right, one other quick point I didn't mention in the video that I figured that I should. One other reason why you could have a bag like this, I noticed from the comments in the other videos so far, is a lot of people either A, can't carry certain things with them, or B, don't want to carry certain things with them. So all that stuff, you know, flashlight or multi-tool or whatever, if you can't carry on your person, the backup redundancy is to put that stuff and the other stuff that we're going to cover in your bag. Obviously, you're not going to carry everything that I put in my bag because a lot of it's personal to me. But these are things that are highly important. So if you can't carry it on your person, then that's why you have an EDC bag. You can put all that stuff in there. So there you go guys, hopefully by looking at what I do, maybe that gives you some new ideas about uh, having an, an everyday carry bag and what should be in it, as opposed to what you see a lot of people do, I just fill it full of survival gadgets and things like that. Obviously, you know, it can be changed based on the current conditions of what's going on, but if you're carrying more than what I've got you're really carrying way too much stuff so everything's going to be different everything's going to be different depending on who you are what your needs are where you're at and what you're doing so these are just guidelines just get you thinking all right guys Chris from prepare my 101 thanks for watching Be sure to click like share and subscribe follow me on Facebook Instagram Google Plus and Twitter the stores at preparedmind101.com so until next time see you then